A quick thank you to WD-40 for sponsoring this video. That ear piercing beep never gets old. There's the prize in the corner. Everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we are going to wake up the sleeping beast. Big Red is sitting in the corner of the shed and to get it outside uh, to kind of save on space inside the machine shed. Um, I kind of want to move the baler over into the corner. Travis is currently working on the baler to set up it for acid and um, we're gonna pull out the Big Red it's in the semi and uh, Probably not gonna hook it up to the trailer today. I wanna go over and have a look at those doors and try opening them and closing them uh, to see if they're locked up or how bad they are. Um, last fall, when we quit hauling, it was getting kinda difficult to open and close them, not gonna lie, especially with the weather and how things were when we finished. What are you doing to the baler? Um, it's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> well, Depending on the instructions or destructions, I mean, half the time I'm really not sure what I'm doing. But I got pictures that I'm trying to follow, and I'm trying to like make it. it look like the pictures. I think you mounted it upside down. That could be possible. Isn't that supposed to drag along the ground? No, it's supposed to be mounted down next to the tongue. <laughs> that's how you, you you know you get the product down to the hay quicker. Yeah. But for anybody that's still wondering, it's a hay preservative applicator by Harvest Tech. So, want to get it set up and ready to go so we can get the baler out of the way and get ready for planting, which you, is coming. Did you get this through Sloan's or Sloan Express? Uh, through Sloan's. I just went to the parts guy and said, hey, order me this. And, How much was it? Uh, what I paid for it or what it should cost? I'm just kidding. Um, it was on a discount. It was like 2500 bucks. I got you. But I think the discount was like free shipping. I think that's all it really was. In what situations would you want to put preservative, preservative on your hay versus not? High moisture. So um, basically anything. everything last year? <laughs> yeah. Um, but the thing is, I was told for the amount of research I've been doing, which was quite a bit, they say that you do not want to wrap any hay that you have put preservative on because it does degrade the plastic. Like say how we wrapped your oatmeal last year, you wouldn't want to put preservative on it and then really? wrap it. Okay. So this is <laughs> ideally for... 20 to 30 percent moisture hay because it's going to keep it from heating which is going to reduce the quality stuff they're going to store inside essentially and i'm not planning on running there's certain material i'm going to be making this year that is going to be for our own use plus potentially to be sold and it seems i don't know how much i'll be able to sell i'm just going to do a blanket application across everything even the stuff that is down by like 15% or so, I still will run a low rate on it just for insurance. What kind of controller has to be mounted in the 76? Uh, a dummy switch, really. Just, really nothing spectacular. Just a simple on off with a dial to control your rate. Hmm. So it, it lights up when it's on. But um, the plan is because you have to turn it off on and off manually when you're doing this. I'm gonna try to mount it as close to my SCV controls as I can so I'm not reaching to turn the switch on and off every time. Because when you're talking doing a couple hundred bales in a day, I mean, your arm's gonna be tired mm -hmm. if you're having to reach, so. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave this in full time because if I can just wire it and I can disconnect it and then that way I don't have it hanging in the tractor full time. Where does it go? That bar that your fingers are on. Um, there's three. Bar, uh, nozzles, bars, tubes that mount uh, evenly across there. You go in the center and then you distance from the center to the outside so you are getting an even distribution of the, the liquid. There's a lot of weight sloshed around up here too because the stuff is 8.8 8 pounds per gallon so there's enough weight sloshed around. The thing is too when you get an uneven ground you got to worry about it coming out through the top or coming out through the tank top. Jack. You like Big Red? 
I'm gonna be a truck driver. Yeah. Now I got the path cleared out for Big Red. I'm gonna pull it outside and kind of park it out of the way. That way it gives us more room inside the shed. Enjoy your short little ride. Time to take this little girl's for a spin. You guys might be able to hear a popping come from down there. You probably can't tell, but I can hear it's coming from down there. Whenever I accelerate, you hear it kind of clicking. That's gone. Clicking. And what that is, is that the exhaust manifold gasket is leaking on the right side. One of them is. We actually took it off not too long ago, uh, but we decided it was a bigger piece than what we were willing to go up against. But we're thinking if we can get a gasket in there and then tighten it back down, it might seal that up. When the exhaust manifold is leaking, I was told that you can get a loss of power up to like 10%. But what the guy told me is that since this is a Cummins M11 anyway, there's really not much power to lose in the first place. <laughs> it's like a bear, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I just wanted to take this thing out and kind of stretch its legs a little bit. I don't know who that was. We just got back. Freaking out. Now we're standing by the side of Big Red and we're looking at the engine block here. So this whole piece, it's a little warm right now so I don't really want to touch it, um, is the exhaust manifold. So what that does is the exhaust comes out of the block, goes into the turbo which is right here and it spools up the turbo which increases the air pressure that's going inside the motor and it's supposed to increase your power because air that's under pressure uh, will give you more power than air that isn't so that's the whole idea behind it but it doesn't work out so well when you have a leak and the leaky one is the far one back there now when we originally bought this truck we were feeling around in here and we had to replace that sensor down there and I believe that's the uh, engine temp sensor and um, when we replaced that, I felt around in there and I noticed that that was kind of loose and the bolts that hold that end on are just were just sitting on there. So I tightened them down. Um, however, it's still leaking. So what we're trying to think uh, maybe what we could do, I don't know if we can do it or not. We'll just have to wait and see whether we want to take the risk with it is take those bolts out and possibly try to see if we can just loosen these ones we don't want to break them off or nothing because for as rusty as they are it could be pretty bad if then those ended up breaking on us um, the whole block would have to come out and it'd have to be sent in to get work done and i can't really afford that but we're going to take that off and see if we can get in there just just enough room to slip in a new gasket and hopefully that'll help close up that gap now this thing has exhaust gaps uh exhaust leaks all over um, I think it's leaking on this side of the turbo here somewhere but it comes from the turbo and it goes out underneath the cab it comes around to the back side we got a leak around here too the uh, Hannah dad and I put on new fenders here because the one on that side while I was hauling with it last fall I stopped to get fuel and uh, 
I looked around and I noticed that it was sitting on there kind of cockeyed. So I pulled it off and needed it to replace. I couldn't buy them just a set of one. You had to buy them in a set. So that's taking Jack around for a ride. Still lots of water up there. So last fall, we had to put a patch in the rear hopper on the trailer. And uh, looks like it's holding up pretty well. Um, it was a pretty serious crack. And um, I had just spotted it one day I was under the trailer and I saw there's some light coming through and it went all the way across the support back here. Right along that support, it was cracked all the way across. We had it patched, the guy basically cut it off and put a new piece in on top. He said that that was gonna get us through at least last harvest, which it did. If not, well, it should get us through two actually, um, and even longer. And it seems to be holding up fairly well. It's just something I wanna keep close eye on until I can replace the trailer. Um, going into the future, I really wanna replace the trailer and the truck. But for now, gotta make it work until I get both of them paid off. Checking out the brake pads. They're good. I would say for at least another season. Now, I gotta keep a close eye on the brake pads on this truck because as conservative as I try to be, and as much as I try to engine brake, I don't have a Jake to slow me down, especially when I'm going down Life Reed Hill, Hill here coming out of Potosi. Um, it's kind of, it can be kind of difficult to keep it going a little bit slower without blowing out your brakes. <laughs> Now we didn't get around to working on the doors on this thing and to me i have to ask myself often is it really worth it um, because i would like to trade this thing in and is it worth putting brand new traps on the door uh, just to trade it off in a couple of years um, if i can make it work for the time being good uh, what i think actually happens is that as you turn the crank here on the door the bar going across along the bottom i think it tweaks as it's opening uh, mostly when it's opening when it's full because of all that weight on there I don't think that it tries to open evenly on both sides and it gets wedged I think that's what causes it but for this season uh, I'm gonna try the handyman's new secret weapon so I pulled something new out of my goodie bag from WD-40 and that is this WD-40 specialist water resistant silicone lubricant I'm gonna be using this to try to keep the doors free this spring when I'm moving corn. Now the corn that we have sold isn't sold until May and June, so it's not quite time to haul yet. And um, I wanna have a look at these doors and see how this works after spraying it. Let it set for a while and just keep working the doors open and closed. I haven't moved them in a couple months, so I'm gonna try to see if they crank easy. And I'm gonna spray some of this stuff in there and try to free them up. But, um, Hopefully this will get me through the season. When I had put that dry lube on there, it actually worked really well. And I had to clean out the rails on the door every two days at first before I started using the dry lube. And then I had to clean it out like every four days. And um, it's, it was a time saver. And I'm hoping that this stuff works pretty good. Um, since this is water resistant, I'm hoping that it can keep some of that dirt and grime from the road off of the, tr or out of the rails. Um, hopefully it doesn't cling on to it. I know that the dry lube didn't, but um, I want to see if this does any better. Oh, immediately tough. <sighs> okay, that's a workout. I'm not. Let's try to see where I can spray this stuff. I try to get it up underneath because that seems to be one of the key areas along this rack and pinion here. Ooh, foamy. Since I'm over here, might as well do this side too. Let's try it out. Oh, 
Well, it's definitely a lot easier to crank. Right now, the dry lube is my go-to, but after I see how this performs this spring, I'm probably gonna be hauling on some rainy days, so I might get a chance to see how this stuff handles. But um, I don't think we're planning on doing any work to the, to the traps on this thing, just because at least I don't really think it's worth it. Um, because I am looking to trade this off. I was actually even looking at putting a sign on the side of this, but if I trade it off in even five years, I'd rather wait. I sprayed down both doors and they're opening and closing a lot easier now, but the real test is gonna come once we load 30,000 pounds of corn up on them and try to crank open the doors then. And there's only really so much I think I can do uh, with lube, but I really did notice a difference when I used the dry lube. So I'm gonna try some of the specialist water resistant silicone lubricant and see if there's a difference, see if I can stretch it out a little bit longer. Um, I'm gonna put this in the truck so when I need it, it's there. And um, we're probably not gonna have to do any service to the trailer this spring. Basically, it's just gonna be hooked up to it and go. Uh, gotta make sure that the truck's all ready to go and whatnot, but otherwise, once it's go time, the first of May, um, I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up hauling more in June because we're still going to be planting in May Unless we haven't gotten into the field yet like last year, but let's not say that too loudly ready to get learned. You're ready to get learned? Yep. You ready to get schooled? I'm gonna school you God, I ain't in school. Yeah, literally Just like that And that You can have this back. I don't want it no more. You can keep it. So I substitute Travis out for Hannah. Now, I'm actually walking the last stretch that really needs to be checked for all of our fields. I just ran a wire across this right here because it looks like we got a ditch that's been going down through the tree roots and I don't want the cows walking out under it. So just put that there to keep Hannah out and uh, we're gonna keep walking this fence line. I think end to end this is probably, well, yeah, it's the worst stretch, but it's also it got to be at least like a mile long because it wraps around the entire farm. So far, this stretch has been pretty bad. We've been working on this all afternoon. But hopefully as we get over that direction, um, nope, it, doesn't get better. it doesn't get better. She already went through and checked, so. <laughs> Thanks for the... Boost to cop. Yeah. I didn't let you get your hopes up, so you're welcome. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so she's going to be riding the gator on the other side of the fence. That way, we don't have to walk back to the gator. Stupid thorn bushes. They're weeds, that's what they are. There you go, there's your... I hate to tell you this, but I don't know if it's gonna be long enough. You just gotta believe. <laughs> nope. When you stretch it, it is. Uh-uh, mm -hmm. not enough. Oh, fine. I have another Sorry. Piece. Now that's too long. Uh, well, the one you have is way too long. <laughs> it's already bent for you, too. I lost it there. Your Nebo's on. It's blinding me right now. Well, don't look at it. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm like a moth. I gotta look at it. It is. Three. Oh, no. Two? 417. It's 417? Holy crap. We are not going to finish this today. Two. No, you have to put it on here. Not necessarily. Yes, necessarily. Why? Because I said to... Dude! What are you doing? Why do I got to do that? Because... Oh, it. you're right. Ah! I mean, I did, I did not just get that on camera. You are not right. <laughs> 
Ouch! Dang it! I just didn't like the placement of it. Ugh. I gotta slide it this way. Gee whiz! Okay. Mm. Doing it like this. Sorry, I gotta be right. <laughs> okay. This time, I'll allow it. Because it's right. But it better I... not happen again. <laughs> okay. Understand me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's putting your job here at risk. <laughs> right here? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Since we can't go through and fix every single broken wire and we can't put on every single missing clamp, um, what are some of the things that we look at when we're looking at some of these fences and trying to decide what to fix and what's not? So right here, there's a tree on the fence. There aren't any broken wires that I can see. Um, however, over time, in this situation, what's gonna happen is that the tree eventually is gonna start popping wires over time because it's gonna be stretch stretching them. And since some of these fences are, I don't even know how old, like multiple decades or more, um, having a tree on there is something that you don't really wanna have, even though we have all these trees growing up along here. Um, we've done our best to try to maintain them and try to keep them down, but there's only so much that we can keep up with. It's a never ending battle. So it really just depends. You have to think like a cow when you're looking at situations like this, or even like when you're trying to figure out what to replace. Is a cow gonna look at that and think, okay, I could reach through there and get some grass, or can I even fit through there? Um, those are probably the two biggest things that you gotta look at. I mean, right now looking at it, there's not a lot of stuff to reach over there, but come summer when all that grass is nice and green and that over there is untouched, they're gonna try reaching through the fence. So you wanna make sure that you don't have areas that are gonna be real easy for them to get out because let's be honest, if a cow wants out, they're gonna get out. Um, it's just the motivation that they need to overcome that fence is going to be the deciding factor. And um, the best thing that we can do is make sure that as much of the fences are intact as possible to push back against them when those things happen. <laughs> Like, did you just genie wish me away? Lower, Am I good? Yep. Ouch! Not <laughs> I've never seen him just lay like that. It's probably sad. I didn't let him get that coon or whatever that was earlier. <laughs> We've been doing quite a few odd jobs here for the last few days, and uh, we got a good portion of the fence fixed down at Travis's place and checked, but we still got a bit to go. So I just pulled today the 82 out of the shed and hooked it up to the VT. There's some work that needs to be done on that. Um, I'll probably talk about that in an upcoming video, but that pretty much sums up what we've been doing here this week. So anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. With that, I'll see you next time.